Welcome to the final lesson in the Angels Among Us series. And this week we focus on the Magi. And first we need to understand what the Magi are. So we three kings of Orient are wrong. The Magi were not kings at all, but wise men, cloistered priests even. You can read in the study guide about the background of the Magi derived from a doctoral study done in 2010 by Brent Landau entitled Revelation of the Magi, The Lost Tale of the Wise Men's Journey to Bethlehem. Uh, this book is available through Amazon, Amazon, but is currently out of print. For this study, it is necessary to understand that these Magi were not geographically obsessed royal rulers. They were a cast of monks living in the caves for generations hoping and praying for the sign of the redemption of the world. Even the word astrologer often attributed to them is misleading. They were indeed not fortune tellers. We also need to understand that in ancient times, it was believed that for every person born, a star would ascend in the heavens, and upon the death of that person, he or she would be reunited with their star. The term for this star is Fravashi, that's F-R-A-V-A-S-H-I. The Fravashi was understood in much the same way today we think of as a guardian angel. The Magi would be earnestly awaiting the bright star in the heavens, signifying to them and to all the birth of the Savior of the world. This waiting had spanned hundreds of years, and many generations of Magoi, which is the Greek word for silence and for Magi, the star, or Fravashi, would be an angelic presence and not just a bright light. Um, as an aside, in conjunction, uh, the, rather the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn uh, in the night sky on December 21st this year will resemble the Bethlehem star. This happens only every few hundred years, so you might want to take notice of it now unless you want to put it on your calendar for the next time around. The recording of this appearance of the Fravashi to the Magi was apparently rather mystical. The Magi saw in it every stage of the Messiah's life from birth through ascension to the throne of God. It is no surprise that the Magi would travel to see this miracle baby and bring expensive gifts to appease the deity. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns the deity nigh, Prayer and praising, voices raising, worship the God on high, wrote John H. Hopkins in 1867, a paraphrase of this Methian text. So how many Magi were there? We don't really know. The number has been revered as three, acknowledging the type of gifts that were brought, gold for his royal status, frankincense to acknowledge that he is a priest, and myrrh, which would be needed for his burial. Likely the whole cloister of monks or priests traveled to see the child. There would also have been helpers with them, carrying provisions, the gifts, and helping with the camels. So we don't know, but we can guess that there were far more than three. Matthew allows us to believe that they were kings because that fits into his theme of the kingship of Jesus. The child is not only of royal blood through King David, but his kingdom is the whole world, according to Matthew. So we have this occurrence of something, and I have it on the slide. There appeared to them a blank in the east, because usually we say star, but Fravashi would also indicate perhaps an angel. And here's another depiction of the, the uh, Magi on their camels moving to see uh, this child moving westward from the east. Um, and here they are coming into the house, and you see Mary and the toddler Jesus, and a couple of the, the Magi, the third one is back as nearly to us, presenting their gifts in the home to Jesus. We need to be aware that um, the Magi did not arrive on Christmas night, and many people have said, oh, then I shouldn't put up the, the three wise men into my crash because I have to wait at least 12 days. We'll talk about 12 in a minute. But no, that's perfectly okay, because the whole theme of Christmas goes from the beginning of Zechariah, who we don't actually put in the manger scene, through Joseph and Mary and Bethlehem. The donkey figures in there as if Mary had gotten herself induced into labor by riding precipitously there. And then we have the shepherds, and we also put in the wise men, so that we see the entire scope of what God has done in humankind. 
So this is a picture of them bringing the gifts to Mary. Now here's a question. You know that your son is pretty special. The shepherds have said that the angels appeared over all the world and sang about his presence. The angel Gabriel had already told you you were going to bear the Son of God. Joseph has agreed and has his own set of dreams to, to kind of go along with yours. But then come kings. I don't think you were expecting magi, rulers, wealthy people, to bring the kind of gifts that the magi brought. There's a, there's a joke that says um, if they were three wise women, they would have brought a, a casserole, clean diapers, and a dustpan to help in the, uh, in the home. But that's only for humor. So here we have the Magi arriving and presenting their gifts uh, to Mary. I want to talk about the arrival of the Magi. Uh, it must be several months after the birth event um, because we know that when Herod found out that there was a, a new king from the Magi when they arrived, he asked them to come back and tell him where, the, where this baby was. They obviously didn't. And so he sent out to have every child under two in that area slaughtered. Um, so this picture of uh, Jesus as a toddler is probably far more accurate. Uh, we know then that that was the second dream angel that Je uh, Joseph had to get Jesus and Mary out of Bethlehem. So it was about 12 um, days is when we celebrate, 12 days after uh, the birth of the child, we celebrate it, which gives us a good length of time. And the reason that 12 is chosen uh, is that 12 is, um, is a biblical number for authority, for completion, and for perfection. You can think of 12 apostles or 12 men in a quorum, 12 tribes of Israel. Perhaps you can think of some other examples of how 12 figures in Bible stories, but to be important. So we know that they, they come much later. The final angelic visit to the Magi then comes after they have seen the child and have presented their gifts. And the Bible tells us that they went home by a different way. And we know that they didn't return to Herod. They didn't go tattle on the baby. But we don't know whether they took a different route or whether they, in seeing the baby, were so thrilled and so spiritually renewed that their way of being was very, very different. You recall that Jesus said, I am the way. And perhaps having seen the way, they went back home by a different way, both root-wise and spiritually. So how might this understanding of the, the Magi, the angel, the Fravashi, how might that change um, your thinking about angels? Do you think that it's possible that we see angels in ways other than what we typically depict at Christmas with the white wings? And I'm even wearing the white of an angel today, the halo. I don't have that. Um, but perhaps a star, perhaps a whisper, perhaps a tune coming on the radio when we least expect it. Perhaps there's other ways, there are other ways that the angels appear to us. So the Magi are not kings. Do you think it makes a difference who they were? Does it matter to you that they're not kings, but they are uh, priestly of a priestly class waiting? You can read in the text about waiting since the birth of Seth, the youngest son of Adam and Eve. If they're not kings, does this make a difference in your understanding of Christmas? Why do you think Matthew told these stories when the other gospels do not? He told the story about the wise men arriving. So he draws out again the lineage of kingship, of the, the royal nature of who Jesus is. But not only the royalty and the gifts, he poses three particular gifts. The gold, of course, is for royalty, but the frankincense talks about Jesus as the priest, the one offering prayers. And we, when we talked about Zechariah, we talked about him being at the altar of prayer with the incense, frankincense, raising up and lifting the prayers on high. Frankincense has a lot of healing uh, qualities to it. You might want to Google it and see all the things that frankincense can do for you even today, but very definitely a healing, uh, healing uh, aroma and a healing herb. So the priest, and then the myrrh, which is an interesting foretaste here in the Christmas season, because myrrh is used as part of the perfuming of the body, anointing it for burial. So in some way, was Matthew telling us already that Jesus was prophet, priest, and king, and that he would be slaughtered for his people 
and the myrrh is there already present for, uh, for him to use for that burial. So what do the stories of the Magi star teach us about angels? Do we have a different understanding of the Christmas angels by having taken this time to go through this study? What signs about Christmas might you be seeking? And how might angels figure in your hopes for this season and beyond? May you be blessed by an angel in your life. In the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer of us all. Amen. Thank you.